All right, so back in 2022, I graduated with a degree in astrophysics, and this left me with a question. What am I gonna do next? Now, fortunately, physics students are some of the most employable graduates of all disciplines because of the skills that we learn throughout the degree. But the specific industry or role that you end up in will largely depend on three factors. Those factors are what you're good at, what you're passionate about, and what your career prospects are. Now, not to toot the horn of physics grads in general, but we are pretty good at quite a few employable skills. Specifically, these are skills to do with data or algorithms or just anything to do with maths in general. These are skills that you'll find are very valuable in a wide range of industries, which we're gonna go into in more detail later on in the video. But specifically, these skills allow us to explore a wider range of career prospects. So physics grads have a lot more career prospects or career pathways than other disciplines. So the specific role that you actually end up in will largely depend on your passion. Now the thing that you're passionate about will fall somewhere on the scale of three different industries that you can explore. These industries are further education, industries that are related to physics, and industries that are unrelated to physics. So what do I mean when I talk about these three different industries? Well, further education can include something like a master's degree or a PhD. Related industries, those are typically sort of research industries or perhaps defense, or another one is engineering. Unrelated industries are stuff like tech or finance. The reason I've laid it out like this is because it's not black and white exactly which different industry you're gonna fit into because some of them overlap. We've got these three bubbles in this sort of Venn diagram kind of layout. And what this shows is that, sure, you could go into further education or you can go into some jobs in an unrelated field, some jobs in a related field straight out of your degree. But there's gonna be some overlap with further education and the different industries. So for example, if you wanna go into sort of engineering, it might be worth getting a further education in some engineering field. Or if you wanna go into an unrelated field, perhaps you wanna get a master's degree in finance or accounting or computer science, something like that. So there are different pathways into these three fields, both direct and through further education, but the specific pathway that you choose will largely depend on the specific industry that you're looking at. So now let's look at those three industries in a bit more detail. And we'll start with further education because this is what I've got most experience with because this is what I did. Now, as I said, with a physics undergrad, you'll probably do one of two different types of further education degrees. You've got a master's degree or a PhD. So a master's, depending on the country that you're in, will typically be one to two years long. And you can broadly split this into two different parts of your degree. So one part of the degree will be a taught component and another part will be a research component. Now the taught component is pretty similar to your undergrad. You get set modules and optional modules that you get to choose from, and it's those modules that you get examined on. So you typically have exams for those modules. Some of them are coursework modules. Most of them will be exam, particularly if you're going into a science or an engineering uh, master's, they're typically quite heavily examined. So the taught component is typically the largest part of the degree. So you'll also have a research component to the degree, and this is, mostly done throughout the summer, throughout the last sort of two, three, four months of the degree, but you'll actually start it right at the beginning and you'll slowly work through it alongside the taught degree. This isn't the same for all countries, but in the UK in particular, this is how it works. I know in other countries where perhaps you have a, a master's degree that is two years long, the first year is all taught and the second year is all research. So depending on the country you're looking at, those are the different formats of having this taught and research components. Now the research usually tries to prepare you for a PhD uh, but broadly speaking, a master's is the tool that allows you to push your career in a different trajectory than your physics, perhaps, uh, degree narrows you down into. That is the main benefit that I found from doing a master's degree. But it also allows you to explore physics more specifically as well, if that's what you're into. So you can do a master's in perhaps astrophysics, and then that can lead to a PhD in astrophysics. And you can, in a lot of universities, continue your research from a master's to a PhD. So what do we do with PhD then? What is the, the value of a PhD? Well, 
A PhD in the UK is about three to four years long, but uh, in other countries it can be a lot longer. And a PhD is pretty much solely research. Um, it's where you develop your own unique uh, research that's never been done before and you've got a lot of control over the type of work that you actually do in uh, the PhD. Now why would you go in and do a PhD? Well I think there's broadly two main reasons why you'd want to do a PhD. The first is that you've got a real interest in the field and you want to continue it further so you want uh, a career in academia. Now this could be perhaps if you wanted to go and be a postdoc and then a lecturer and a professor the PhD is pretty much required to do that. Um, you need to have that experience of doing your own uh, unique and individual research. The second reason you'd want to do a PhD is because you are deeply passionate about the specific topic, but perhaps you just don't really want to go into that field uh, long term. You're just very curious, very interested in a specific uh, part of physics, for example. And so a lot of people do PhDs just out of passion, and that's also completely fine. But there are different reasons why you'd want to do a PhD compared to a master's, and the time commitment is something that is worth acknowledging. So on the topic of careers outside of physics and outside of a PhD, let's look at the industries that are related to physics. Now it's very hard to define what specifically is related to physics and what's not related to physics, but I've broadly broken it down into two main industries. The first is defense, and you see a lot of, uh, a lot of grads going into defense. And the second is engineering. Now there is, of course, a lot of crossover between defense and engineering because a lot of the time when you're working in defense, you're actually working on some form of engineering. Um, but as I said, there are different types of engineering that, is, that falls without defense. So we can sort of add this hard border between the, the two different industries. So most of the physics grads that end up working in defense will typically fall into two different categories of careers. One in engineering and one in research. And you can think of this like uh, the researchers find out what the problems are and the engineers find a way to solve them. Now falling into the engineering sector, this is where we'll find something like aerospace or mechanical engineers or electrical engineers. Physics does lend itself very well to engineering because essentially engineering is just applied physics. Now in my case, I went through this route. I did a master's in space engineering after doing my astrophysics degree and ended up in a, an engineering role in the space sector. And that just shows that you don't need to know everything before applying for these jobs. It's more a case of showing that you are able to pick up these skills and pick up the knowledge quickly and efficiently, which is something that you are taught through a physics degree. Now these are just two industries that fall within the wider related industries group that I mentioned earlier. And of course there's going to be others that I haven't mentioned like nuclear physics or medical physics. But what I'm really trying to show here is that it's not so much about the specific industry knowledge that you have that counts, it's more about the skills that you're able to demonstrate that you can apply to these industries. Now of course doing further education and doing a master's in the specific industry that you're looking to go to will help you to change the trajectory to that industry. But if you have a broad set of very strong skills that you learn through a physics degree, you can usually apply these to related industries very easily. So defense and engineering and medical physics and nuclear physics all lend themselves to the same group of skills, problem solving, uh, data analysis, data visualization, uh, algorithms, and just general maths. All of these skills will broadly be contained within these industries as a whole. So if you've got a physics degree, you can pretty easily fall into these related industries. Now the final group of industries are those that are unrelated to physics and similarly to the related degrees they use a lot of the skills that we pick up in a physics degree but what's different and what sets them apart is that you never really end up using any of the physics knowledge that you pick up in your degree so the theory of physics isn't really used it's more the skills and the competencies that we develop throughout the degree. Now these industries may include finance, tech, accountancy or even law and patent law. Now what you can tell is that there is some sort of connection between all of these industries you know they're not completely separate and there is something connecting them all and really what it is is the skills that we pick up in a physics degree so for example all of these what they have in common is problem solving and this is something that is 
really important when it comes to understanding your value as a physics grad is that you're able to solve complex problems and find solutions to complex problems really efficiently and that is a highly employable and a highly monetizable skill. Now the specific skills that you pick up in a physics degree will lend themselves better to some industries compared to others. So for example your programming and ability to make algorithms will lend itself really well to tech whereas your ability to analyze complex data will lend itself well to accountancy or to finance. The important thing is that you develop these broad range of skills and you develop them well so that you're able to apply them to a wide range of industries. And if you know exactly which industry you want to go into, make sure that you really focus in on the skills that are valuable to that industry. So those are the main three options for pathways that you have as a physics graduate. Now, of course, it's not as simple as fitting into one of those three categories. There are plenty of opportunities that you'll have to switch between them all and you should never feel really cornered into one of those industries. If you're not enjoying it, you can always switch up with a physics degree because again, you've got plenty of skills that are employable across a wide range of industries. And if you want to switch up really heavily, you can always go back into academia and do a master's and switch your career trajectory from there. And I hope that if you are a student or graduate in physics that you found this video useful and it's given you some insight into the options you have available as a physics graduate. And if you did enjoy this video, please leave a like and I'll see you in the next one.